All right, let's see if we're live. <coughs> Check YouTube. Now we should be good to go. <coughs> All right, I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about using imagination to improve pronunciation uh, and to sound, excuse me, to sound more like a native speaker. All right, let's get the party started. Hopefully everybody is doing well. You can let me know if you have any questions about this or anything else in the chat. I think somebody asked me a while ago, why I don't erase the board before I begin? And the reason is sometimes the lives don't work. <laughs> so if I start the live, and I erase what's on the board and it doesn't work, I have to do it again. Anyway, uh, hello everyone out there. You can feel free to post your chat. Looks like everything is working now, so we should be able to go. All right, uh, so before I talk about improving pronunciation with your mind, rather than even uh, saying anything, which uh, should be a lot of fun and interesting for people, I wanted to tell a quick story because this is just something that happened to me. It's related to the mind, and uh, I just thought it was an interesting story I would share with everybody. So a few days ago, uh, I was talking with a learner. Uh, this learner is a dentist, uh, and they do use some English with their, uh, like their customers, their clients, you know, the, the people, the patients, I guess you would say. Um, but like on their website, there were lots of errors with their English. Uh, and so I was saying, oh, you should fix these. Like here are some examples of how you would fix these errors because when people look at these things, even if you are a good dentist, even if you are good at what you do, if people see you making lots of errors in how you write, so the written English that's representing you, uh, they will obviously think that maybe you're not as qualified to be a good dentist. So this is how people think. If the way we present ourselves, especially the words we use uh, are not presenting like a good, you know, like good grammar, good pronunciation, then it's going to make people reconsider maybe doing business with us or, uh, you know, associating with us in some way. Uh, but what I heard from this learner is that, well, like, yeah, English is important for them, but it's not like so necessary for what they do. Uh, and I said, that's fine. It's okay if you maybe don't need English. I was surprised they had uh, English on their website, uh, even if they don't really have like a real need for it. So it just got me thinking, oh, there there are like a lot of people that, that like the way English looks and they present that just because English itself looks cool. <laughs> so like you, you come here, so I live in Japan and you will see kids or people just with like random English on their shirt, you know. I guess in a similar way, people in the United States, they'll have like, you know, Chinese or Japanese character tattoos or shirts or whatever, but sometimes the characters are incorrect <laughs> and people have fun with that. Uh, but the interesting thing about this story is that uh, after that, I was just thinking, uh, I bet there are some people that use lorem ipsum. Uh, let me write, I'll write this on the board for you. If you don't know what this is, people who design uh, websites or do uh, like any kind of design, they will often use this. If I'm spelling it correctly, it's actually Latin, not English. Uh, but lorem ipsum is just, it's like just random Latin text that people use in place of something if they don't have anything just to see how text looks on a website. So you can, you can just copy this or generate it. It will just repeat this thing over and over again uh, just so you can have that. And I said, I bet somebody is just having random like Latin like this on their website or on their advertisement or something uh, just because it, it looks like English. <laughs> and it was crazy because uh, like a day later in Nagasaki, I saw this. <laughs> And you could still see it today. Uh, so I was on a just a tram, a streetcar, and going down towards Nagasaki. And I looked at a sign. It looked like a new business. It was for like a, a dart, 
like a dart or billiard hall. So just a place you can go throw darts or shoot, you know, pool or something like that. Um, and it had, you know, like regular English. It was like a picture of a, like a dart board with a dart on it. I'm not going to draw this very well. So imagine this is a dart board and there's a dart going into it and it said darts, but it had lorem ipsum on the side. <laughs> on the picture and so it's it's just there because it looks like English and even I'm sure the people who put it there don't realize what it is that it's Latin and it doesn't mean anything <laughs> anyway uh, I just thought that was a funny story I would share with you because it was so quick from me thinking about this so I thought wouldn't it be funny if someone did this and then a day later I actually saw it here in Nagasaki <laughs> of like of all the places I would see that there is lots of English here in Japan and even in Nagasaki but I did not expect to see this in Nagasaki so I thought that was very funny anyway uh, so let's talk about the mind and how you can use it to improve your pronunciation uh, I'll go back and check uh, questions right quick just to see if anybody has anything pressing so anything that's like very important let's see Arturo says nice to see you there Franklin nice to see you there Earth Sky how do you pronounce angry please there you go angry uh, also at the beginning of this video if you'd like to hear me pronounce individual words uh, just get Frederick. I'll leave this up on the board here. So you can hear me pronounce over 2,000 words and sentences and actually learn to pronounce these things the same way natives learn them. So native children are using this app and also non-native adults are using this app to improve their pronunciation. Obviously non-native kids are using them as well, um, but if you want to improve your pronunciation, improve your listening uh, with the technique, especially that I'll be teaching in this video, you should get Frederick and you can hear me pronouncing different things. So this technique actually works very well with the app. So anything like hearing particular words, but also just improving your listening and pronunciation generally, you can click on the link in the description below this video to get Frederick. <clears throat> All right, Tom says, good morning. T-Rex, first time in a live. Nice to see you there. Ita says, good morning. Tam says, hi, nice to see everybody there. Morning, where do I live? So I live in Nagasaki, Japan. Uh, VJ says, good morning, Tom. Yeah, all right, all right, he answered that for me. Cam, hello from Thailand. All right, also notorious, notorious. So you will hear like notorious and n notorious, notorious as well. Victor says, I drew, uh, is going to be my third live lesson Olo from New York. Nice to see you there. Good morning from Taiwan. Uh, oh, awesome, guys. Morning. This is the best class on YouTube, <laughs> says Tom. Tom, you are too kind. Uh, Kata says, hello, Arturo. Uh, what to do about phrasal verbs with many meanings? You know, actually, lots of members of Fluent for Life and uh, members of the Visual Guide of Phrasal Verbs have been asking about that. Um, typically, with phrasal verbs, you will have uh, like a core meaning of something. It could be like one or two core meanings of a phrasal verb uh, and then you will have uh, like outside of that like slightly related to that like let's say uh, I want to I want to like pull something in like to pull in pull in and the way I teach phrasal verbs and really this works for any kind of vocabulary is you're looking for if you can uh, like a physical meaning or something that's easy to understand directly without having to translate anything or needing any explanation. So if I have like like a fishing a fishing pole and there's a fish on the end of it, I want to like pull in the fish. So I'm going to pull something in, to pull it. So to bring it closer to me by pulling that thing, to pull something in. So that's kind of the physical core meaning to bring something closer to you by pulling it, okay? So as opposed to like, pushing something into something else, I'm going to pull it towards me. So we get the core meaning, or just the understanding of that, and typically there's like one or two, maybe three core meanings of a phrasal verb. And then you get a more figurative or metaphorical understanding of that. Like I could pull someone in to my plan. So maybe I want to do, I want to start a new business, I want to build a bakery or something. Uh, in my local area, but I don't, maybe I need an accountant and I need a marketing person and some other people. I need to pull other people in, so I need to pull them in to my plan as well. 
So here I'm not like physically pulling them, but I'm attracting these people, I'm pulling these people into my plan. So when you're understanding phrasal verbs, typically you, you have to use your imagination a little bit. It's interesting talking about that uh, as the subject of this video, but using your imagination to try to make connections because you might look at something and not realize how something works. I think actually a question we got um, recently was talking about what phrasal verb was that it was uh, it's on the tip of my tongue it's on the tip of my tongue if i can remember it uh, it was talking about oh it was talking about putting someone out so the phrasal verb to put something or put someone out so again if i think about the opposite of pulling something in i might be inside my house and i take this marker and i place it outside of my house. So I'm putting something out, putting something out. Uh, and this person was asking, well, what about the meaning of put out as inconveniencing someone? So I could take someone, like let's say I imagine someone, uh, like I, I want to go, I need to stay at their house for a week. Uh, so I know it's inconveniencing them. So I can say, I know I'm putting you out. So it meaning, meaning like th this is their kind of comfortable everyday zone where they usually are. And then I remove them from that. I place them outside of that, which is a little bit painful or uncomfortable or it's inconvenient for them. So I'm putting them out of the place where they feel convenient and putting them really into a place of inconvenience. But you can see how I, I make the connection between the core meaning of, of taking something and, and placing it outside of some other location, but this is a bit more metaphorical or figurative where I'm taking someone who's feeling comfortable or this is their everyday life and I'm putting them out of that. So I'm putting you out of something, like I'm making you feel bad. So if you're asking someone for a favor, you can say this. It's a very casual, conversational way to say, oh, I'm inconveniencing you. So I know I'm putting you out, Good, but could you please pick me up from the airport? Or could I stay at your house for a few days or something like that? So I know I'm putting you out. So I'm putting you out of the place where you feel comfortable, okay? So this is how to understand phrasal verbs. Uh, so typically they have fewer meanings than most learners think they do. It just seems like there are all these different meanings, but really there's maybe one or just maybe two or three uh, where you will find like the actual meaning of it. So just use your imagination, you'd use your mind a little bit uh, and try to find connections if you can't. But usually when I teach them, I'm teaching like this. So I begin with a core verb uh, or a core meaning and then I want to start going out of that to make it more, okay, these are maybe a bit more difficult to understand because they're metaphorical or they're figurative or something. I'll just give you one more example to make this clear. Uh, so if we talk about go under, I've given this example before on the channel. To go under, you can think about a boat. So we have a boat here on the water, and if the boat goes down under the water, you can see there's a problem. The boat is physically going down under the water. But we can also talk about go under like a business going under. So maybe there, you can imagine this level here of like being able to make money or profitability, but they're going under that. They're actually going under. They're not being able to do that anymore. And so it becomes more difficult. And typically when we talk about a company going under, this means they're going to bankruptcy. So the, the company will, will like be dissolved or destroyed or they will end it or something like that at some point. But again, you can see how we take something like going under and then we, we begin with a physical meaning that we can see. Like, oh, look at that, the boat is going under the water. And then we can expand that, expand our understanding to a more figurative thing. And this is the way natives learn to communicate. So they're, they're not necessarily speaking uh, like directly, but they might be using that same idea to talk about another thing. And I'll make one more quick point about this. Uh, and this is why it's often important to study or to learn a variety of subjects because you never know what might be coming from one thing and is used in another. As an example, you might have a like a sports analogy or something like sports. So you might have something like to, to hit the ball out of the park. So this is in baseball when you hit a home run to hit the ball 
out of the park is a good thing. It's like the best thing you can do uh, offensively, so for getting more points for your team uh, in baseball. But we can also use that same expression to hit something out of the park when someone does anything very well. So you did a very good job with a business presentation or your academic paper or anything else. You can just say, hey, you really hit that out of the park. You really hit that out of the park or you hit one out of the park. Okay. So you see how really natives are making these different connections and the reason they're able to do that is because they understand vocabulary from situations. They're not really trying to think about vocabulary by itself. They're thinking about the meaning of something and how can we expand the, the usage of the uses of that thing. How else might we use something or what other situations might we use something in. Okay. So that's how we work. Uh, so truthfully, there are fewer meanings of phrasal verbs than people think they are. It just seems like a lot. Uh, but if you use your imagination, a little creativity, maybe try to tell some stories about things, it will be easier uh, for you to understand these things. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see, where did I leave off here? All right. Uh, I think I got all of those over here. Wait, what did I? Okay. Uh, is it morning or evening for you? It is, uh, let's see, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning here in Nagasaki, Japan. All right. Uh, let's see. Elder, nice to see you there. All right. Can you tell us a simple information about state and dynamic verbs? That's not really the subject of this video, but if you want to Google that rather than me like explaining anything, feel free. Uh, Earth Sky, let's see. All right. Uh, Miguel says, greeting from Sao Paulo, Brazil, from Morocco. Look at that. International relations. Nice to see you there. Muna, hello. You sound American. Yes, that would be correct. I'm from Chicago in the United States, but I do speak a little bit more clearly a little bit more slowly, and I'm often using vocabulary that's easier for people to understand. So my, my typical speaking voice is a little bit different from how I'm speaking now. Sandra, nice to see you there. Uh, Lyra says, can take out be used instead of put out? Yes, it just depends on what you're, what you're talking about, like where, often, again, you will have uh, multiple ways of expressing something, like it is probably in your language as well. Uh, and so we have, let's say, uh, a person, let's see, here's me, and I have a, a box here, and there's a little, I don't know, just a ball inside of this box. And so I could take the box out, it's, or take the ball out of the box, so I'm kind of reaching in, and I'm taking it out of the box. So I'm taking the ball out of the box to take something out. Uh, but I could also put the ball out, and it's more like I'm thinking about, like, taking the ball from here and putting it someplace else. Make sure I got those phrasal verbs. Yeah, so you can use both of these. Uh, the idea for both of them is that we're removing something. So I'm, the ball is no longer in the box. Either I'm holding it or I'm putting it on the floor or something like that. So I can either take the box out, and when I'm taking something, I'm usually bringing it to myself in some way. Uh, or I can put it somewhere. Okay, so I could put it in my hands or I could put it on the floor. So it's the same meaning, but you can think about how natives would, would understand this visually. Oh, I'm taking something out, but then maybe I put it somewhere. Okay, so both of those are fine. Uh, Aman says, the greatest reward in the world is what you get from teaching others. Thank you, sir. Yes, I really enjoy teaching, and that's why I do it. Uh, I like to see that uh, the, the spark or that little, the, 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 what do you call it? Like the expression, I can see it in people's eyes. And I can't see your eyes as I'm teaching you here, but I've done this long enough that I can tell when people understand something. Uh, and that's why I teach. That's a feeling I like to see. I remember uh, the pale... Uh, put, uh, Paul, Paul McCartney, uh, put it there. Could you please explain what he means by that? Well, I don't, I don't know that song, but you can guess like probably from this same idea. He's like placing something or putting something in a particular place. All right, greetings, Drew. This is one minute long. Fried star, is that freed? Uh, we love you, teacher. Thanks for your dedication. You deserve much love. It's my pleasure. Can you tell us this relationship between both languages, English and French. Can you tell us about this relationship between both languages, English and French? I don't know what that's asking me about. Uh, how is your normal speaking? So uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that in this video, but you can watch uh, 
actually any of the conversation videos I have on this channel, and you will see my regular speaking voice. All right, uh, so let's talk about imagination. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this, I know people would like to sound more like a native speaker, and people can say, well, what is a native speaker? And they're millions of examples. Just pick one. You know, you're like I am a native speaker. Anyone who speaks English confidently and fluently, you'll notice that we all sound a little bit different. And so pick whoever you like. You know, you could pick, uh, you know, you want to sound like a celebrity or you want to sound like, like people in your local community or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, but this is how we can do this by ourselves and actually improve our pronunciation. So this is one of our members of Fluent for Life was asking me about improving pronunciation uh, and how to do this more uh, by himself. And so anybody can do this as well. Uh, so just before I explain this, uh, a similar study, actually I think multiple studies have been uh, done about people shooting basketballs. And studies have been shown, uh, studies have shown that mental rehearsal, so even just sitting down with your eyes closed, relaxing, or even standing up and pretending like you're shooting a basketball, so if you're at the free throw line where you try to shoot, that can actually help you improve your game. So it can help you improve your free throw shooting ability without actually shooting the ball. So the ability of the mind to help you practice and prepare, uh, this is really powerful and so you can use it to improve your pronunciation as well. So what I like to do when I'm teaching people pronunciation is really the most important part, uh, really the most important part is that you should be getting lots of examples from many different native speakers. This is why in Fluent for Life we've got, I don't know, maybe over a hundred, I think, different native speakers that you hear. Uh, you don't want to listen to only me because maybe you will sound like me and that's fine, but we need to prepare you for lots of different people. So maybe you can understand my speech, but someone in a movie or maybe someone with a thick Scottish accent or someone in a part of the United States, it's more difficult for you to understand, like the South. So whatever you're not used to, that will be more difficult for you to hear and also uh, just really just make it generally more difficult to communicate. So uh, we want you to practice being able to make these different sounds in your mind because it's easier to do this than it is to mimic someone's voice actually. So I can hear, like anybody I want to, I can hear their voice clearly in my mind even if I can't sound exactly like them. As an example, a singer like Barry White. So this is like a big black guy with a deep voice. I can't, I can't like physically make my voice sound like his, but in my mind I can. So I can actually uh, imagine him in the same way AI, so artificial intelligence, now you see more examples of this where people can take a celebrity voice uh, or you know anybody like that. If you give that uh, the AI lots of samples of a person speaking, you're kind of training them to make or recognize certain patterns about their speech so that you can make that same thing as well. And as you practice this, so this is the same thing I get good at doing in my mind, I can take Barry White's voice in my mind, so he's like a really like low, deep singer, uh, and I can make him say whatever I want to in his voice. So I can imagine how he would say that in his own voice. And it's important to learn how to do this because that will help you improve your pronunciation as well. This mental rehearsal, it can also take you with your own voice and you can imagine yourself. That's kind of the result of this. So you start by imagining other people. I'll just give you some very quick steps for how you do this. But you can imagine other people and then you get some good examples of them speaking. Maybe if you like listening to my voice uh, or if you've watched a lot of my videos, you probably know the sound of my voice and the way I'm speaking here. So you could imagine if I give you some text that you could imagine me saying that and how my voice would sound. And so I'll give you some examples of that as well. But then you could take something I have not said and then try to imagine how that would say and then compare it back with what the actual person is saying. So you can do this with any example. Uh, I'll just give you some very quick steps for this just to make it easy for people. So the first thing is you need to find some example of speech. It could be me, it could be anybody else, just someone you want to sound like or you want to help un to understand their own pronunciation uh, because your pronunciation and listening are linked. As you improve one, you improve the other. So just find something 
uh, like find a person, find a speaker, whatever that person is, just a native speaker or somebody that you want to sound like or that you want to understand better. So find a speaker, find a speaker. Uh, and when you find something, you need to have an example with text. It doesn't have to be that, but it's a lot easier if you do something. Uh, so there should be should be some text. And this is actually a very simple process. You just need to find something. Uh, like in my videos, I have uh, transcripts from them. You can see these right on YouTube or the subtitles as well. Uh, typically for live videos, it takes about uh, a day for the video to process and for the subtitles to be created. So if you're watching this right now uh, and you're watching it live, then you have to come back and watch the subtitles. But any previous videos, you will find the subtitles for those. Uh, but that's a very like easy part because there's lots of, if you're maybe trying to do this with a movie, uh, then you can have a uh, like a movie script. So whatever that, that thing, like the, the person is, just find someone who has a transcript. It's just easier to do it this way. So you find someone with a transcript, uh, and then the next thing you want to do is just listen. So you're, you're kind of listening to them. So listen to them while you read the transcript, just so you can understand the words. It's much easier while you're reading the transcript, because if you're just listening, you might miss some words. So find a movie script or something like that where you can read along with the person. So listen while you read along. And again, uh, I'm, I'm listening to them. I'm actually hearing their voice. So maybe I find someone, like I watch a movie like The Lord of the Rings, uh, and I'm listening to some character, and I have the script or the subtitles on the video while I'm watching it. Okay? So very simple. Step one, find something. It could be a movie. It could be a person, like a YouTube video, something like that, but something where you can hear that person and seeing them is a good idea as well. So that's why I talk about movies or videos rather than listening to a podcast, something like that. You can just improve your pronunciation better when you can visually see the way people are moving. This is why children really should see people's, uh, people's mouths moving as they're listening to their speech. All right, and then while you're listening to something, you're beginning to read along. So what's happening in this process, you are, if we just imagine like, we'll put your ear right here, uh, and then we have like your eye, you're listening to them, but you're also reading the transcript. So you're listening to the, the transcript and you're re or listening to the speech, uh, reading the transcript, and then the part three of this, make sure you can fit this in here. All right, three fits. So now what we want to do is imagine how they will say something next, okay? So, so far we've been listening and reading at the same time. We're paying attention to what they say and we're also uh, listening or reading the transcript. And so the next thing, if we continue following this, what we want to do, actually we'll, we'll continue reading the transcript, but we will stop listening, okay? So we're right so far at the beginning, we're listening to them, and we're reading the transcript at the same time. But then we will stop listening to them, like I'm watching a movie or something while I'm reading the transcript of that thing, and I will just continue as if it's them in my mind, and I'm there, so they're not saying anything, I'm not watching them, I pause the video or whatever I'm watching, but I still read the transcript in my mind like it's their voice, okay? So this part here where I'm listening to them and I'm reading the transcript, it's kind of giving my mind input about the way they would say something. And so this could be like five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. If you know that person very well, it will be easier. But if it's a, like a new person, a new example or a movie, something like that, then you should give yourself more time. Uh, so you're going to listen and you're going to listen to them and you're going to read the transcript at the same time and then you continue. So let's say I have a speech where someone is saying, uh, tomorrow I will go to the park uh, and then I will play with my dog. So tomorrow I will go to the park and then I will play with my dog. So at this part of the speech here, we, from here to here is tomorrow I will go to the park. And then this part it just, I'm reading the transcript, tomorrow I will go to the park and then I will play with my dog. Tomorrow I will go to the park and then I will play with my dog. So we're listening to their speech here and then over here we're imagining what they would sound like. 
You're just seeing it in, in your mind. You're, you're actually, you could close your eyes, see them and imagine them saying that thing in their voice, okay? So just imagine how someone would say that. And then after that, so step three, after you do this thing, you're going to go back and let it continue and compare what you had in your imagination with how they actually spoke it, okay? And so even if it doesn't sound exactly right, you know, you can do this a couple of times with different speech, but the point is for you to get good at understanding how that person would speak, it's really like, you know, good exercise for your mind and your pronunciation and listening. Uh, but you can do this a number of times. So with the same person, it could be the same actor or a person like me, anyone else. But this is how you prepare yourself. You can take some new speech and then actually test how good your pronunciation is. Okay, so you can, and again, it's, it's not even like you speaking. This is all in your imagination, all of these steps. So the first thing you find something, you listen to it while you're reading along, and then you continue reading while you stop or are you, while you stop listening to them, all right? So the step three is then you go back and check that as well, okay? So check your progress or check your progress, check your understanding and then compare. So I can easily listen and then I can continue to do this maybe for, you know, the next five minutes or something. So I could, I could read the transcript a little bit, imagine how they would sound and then continue to play the video and then see how that sounds. Okay. Now, to give you a good example of this, again, it really is a very simple thing, but we just want to get used to how they would sound, imagining that other person uh, sounding in our mind. Okay. We're just, we're just trying to imagine someone else and how they would sound in our mind. So we're going to do an example of this right now, just so I can show you how this would work. All right, so we're going to use me as an example and I want you to try to imagine how I would say something and then we will compare that, okay? So the first thing, uh, we just imagine this is like a, a real thing where you're watching a video or you're watching me talking about something, uh, but we'll have, uh, I'll just write something very quickly, a little bit something simple. Uh, we'll just do the same kind of thing we did in the previous example tomorrow. That's the T-O-M-O. All right, I can't write and, <laughs> and talk at the same time. M O R R O W tomorrow. Okay, so we have. Uh, just two sentences here. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to say this one just so you can get a feeling for how I would speak. You've already been listening to me for a while, especially if you've been listening for many videos. You've, you're, you're used to the sound of my speech. You can probably imagine how I will say this second sentence here, but I'm just going to say this one and then I'll give you a moment to try to imagine how I would say the second sentence. Okay, so this is just an example of how you would do this with any speech or any text, uh, text and video, like a movie transcript uh, that you would find, okay? Tomorrow I will play baseball. Tomorrow I will play baseball. So just imagine me saying this in my mind, or in your mind. Tomorrow I will play some baseball, or tomorrow I will play baseball. Tomorrow, I will play baseball. Okay, hopefully you've got this in your mind. Now I'm going to say the whole thing and you can compare that with how it sounds in your mind. Tomorrow, I will play baseball. Then I will eat some pizza. Tomorrow, I will play baseball. Then I will eat some pizza. Tomorrow, I will play baseball. Then I will eat some pizza. So usually what people are doing when they're trying to improve their listening is it's more of a passive, uh, like a passive exercise of just listening to someone speak. But if you get active with this and try to anticipate what the other person will say, or maybe you're not like anticipating what they'll say, but you know what they'll say, you're trying to understand how they would say that, it really improves your listening and it really trains you to think more like a native speaker and to get your accent and your pronunciation much more smooth and natural. 
All right, so we'll give you this one more time. Tomorrow I will play baseball, then I will eat some pizza. Tomorrow I will play baseball, then I will eat some pizza. All right, I'll give you one more example. We'll write uh, a different set of sentences here, but hopefully you get the idea. Tomorrow I will play baseball. After that, I'm, gonna, I'm going to eat pizza, isn't it? Well, again, there are different ways to express this. The point of this example is not that there's only one way to do this. The point is I'm trying to listen and then just when I know what the person is going to say, this is the easiest way to do it. Now, the highest level of this, which we're not going to talk about in this video, is actually being prepared for what people will say. As your English improves, you're able to anticipate what other people will say, even if you don't know what they're going to say. So this example is just about pronunciation. I'm not trying to guess what the other person will say next. I'm just listening and just trying to improve my pronunciation or my ability to, to sound or make English sound the way I want to by listening to someone who's already a native speaker. So someone who already has good pronunciation, we want to take that example and just practice that in our mind, okay? So I'm going to give you another example. All right, let's try this one more time. I apologize for the red. Hopefully you can see it, but this should make sense. So will you come to the party? 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 Okay, we'll do the whole thing now. Will you come to the party? I'll be there late. Will you come to the party? I'll be there late. I'll be there late. I'll be there late. All right? So remember, the whole point of this exercise is to stretch your mind, stretch your imagination, uh, and then you can do the same thing as well. This is the maybe the first step for uh, improving your pronunciation, anticipating what someone else will sound like. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm trying to give you this example. It's okay if uh, you know, there are lots of examples you can find, even if this one is not the clearest example. Uh, I can do some blue. We can give you one more uh, just to make this a little bit easier, a little bit easier to read. Let's try black. All right, hopefully this is clear. I'm going shopping today. I'm going shopping today. I'm going shopping today. So can you imagine how I would say this? I'm going shopping today. I'm going shopping today. And it's okay if it doesn't sound exactly right, if your pronunciation isn't perfect, that's not really the point because I could actually pronounce these things or say them slightly different, uh, differently, especially if I'm uh, focusing on a particular thing. As an example, I might say, I'm going shopping as opposed to someone else, or I'm going shopping today as opposed to some other day. All right, but for this example, the point is we're just trying to listen to something and anticipate how you think in general I might sound, okay? I'm going shopping today. Do you need anything? I'm going shopping today. Do you need anything? Do you need anything? Okay, I think everybody's getting it, all right? No thanks, all right. That's good, because I'm not really going shopping today. Oh, all right, so I'm going shopping today. Do you need anything? Hopefully everybody gets this. Again, this is just an exercise for you to uh, 
to anticipate how other people might speak so you can start to manipulate their speech in your mind. So you are kind of becoming an AI. This is how you would naturally do it. Now, if you watch people who do voices for characters, like you know, people who do cartoon characters, that kind of thing, they're trying to imagine how that character would speak, and then they give that voice. So that's what they're doing uh, with the same kind of technique. All right. So the next thing you can do af as you get good at doing this is just doing it with your own voice. So before you speak, imagine how someone else would speak, and then you try to imagine it with your voice. So the fourth step in this process is just imagine, try to do it with your own voice. All right. So as you get used to hearing other people pronounce things, you don't need to sit and, and physically pronounce things uh, in order to improve your pronunciation. You can actually do this mentally just to prepare for that. And as you get used to doing that, your mind, you will naturally uh, begin you know, changing the way you, you think and the way you pronounce it will become a natural process for you. OK, so I'm going shopping today. Do you need anything? All right. So do you need anything? Do you need anything? Do you need anything? There are different ways I could pronounce this, but the general idea is that I'm just training my mind to be prepared for how people, how people would speak. And so if you're good at mimicking actual voices or taking someone's voice and saying something new with it, the same way AI does, that's the same thing you can do with your pronunciation. Okay. All right. It's like someone just mentioned water, which is a good idea. There we go. So you can imagine anybody saying anything, and you can also imagine yourself saying something in the kind of voice you would like to have. So I can take somebody's voice and, and change what they say or give them some new words in the same way that a cartoon uh, voiceover person would do this. All right, so that's the whole technique. Very simple, something you can try. And I do this. Uh, regularly with Japanese, so I can listen to a Japanese speaker and take their speech and change it a little bit so it fits my voice. And when I actually speak, then it, you know, it's my actual speaking voice. But I can uh, prepare, I can understand this thing uh, in, in my own pronunciation. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. All right, let me go back and answer any questions people have. This is actually a very simple process. And uh, the point is it's just rather than you being passively uh, trying to listen to something, you're actively trying to anticipate what other people would say or how people would sound. And as you get better at that, you can improve your own pronunciation in the same way. So I can take their sound or their voice and I can make it my voice in my mind. I can do whatever, whatever I want in my own mind. All right. It's your mind. You do what you want with it. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. I'll go back and answer these. Let's see. Talison says, hello from Brazil. Gantz says, how is your... No oh, I, can't, I think I answered that already. All right. Uh, can you make a video with your daughter? We really want to see you with your daughter. I think it will be an amazing idea. Uh, you can find, actually, my older daughter, Aria. I don't think Noel is in a video, uh, but both of my daughters. Actually, this is an interesting story. Uh, I can't show it because I have it's on my phone right now, but my, my two daughters, so Aria is eight and Noel just turned five years old. Uh, they're very creative. They like to make things and build little stuff. Aria made like a phone with some pieces of paper. Uh, it was an interesting little thing that she made. Um, but they decided they wanted to do a, they were kind of playing, pretending to be news reporters. Uh, and so Aria has a tablet, like, a, like, a, like an iPad kind of thing that she got from her school. Uh, and she also has, I think, like a, a different one that we got, just another tablet she can use. Uh, but she and Noel, so both of them, like they put some toy cars on the ground and they were talking about like a traffic accident. And so Aria recorded that. So she took a video of that. And then they took the iPad and like put it up behind Noel. And Noel was standing there being like pretending to be a reporter with the, with the screen behind her, just like an actual news broadcast. <laughs> So I thought that was very entertaining. Uh, so that, that's like, you know, the kind of thing they do. But this is a similar idea of actually what I just explained about using your imagination. Uh, and so I don't know if they will be in uh, any videos, if that's helpful. Maybe we could do that. But uh, 
I did that before with Aria just because it was new, like it was a, a different thing I could show her. So I have a video about me teaching her uh, some phrasal verbs, and I use that same process in the visual guide to phrasal verbs uh, as well as Fluent for Life. All right, AHA Music Group has a song called Take On Me. What does Take On Me mean? Ah, well, you should watch. Do you, do you know the video? You should watch the video. Watch the music video. It will make more sense. So, like, taking on something is, like, to accept that thing or to welcome that thing, like, uh, or it could mean to kind of fight against that thing as well. Watch the video. All right, again, it's some students practice with movie stress and sound like the characters, but when it comes to reality, it's not like cinema. Yes. So, again, the... The native speaker is learning with lots of different examples. So a native will watch some movies. Like, it, like if I'm learning uh, Japanese in Japan, I could only watch anime TV shows, and, and real people don't speak like that. You know, it's like a special way of speaking that normal people, you would very rarely hear anyone speak with that vocabulary or, or that way of speaking. But it's an example of how people speak. And so part of that influence is what's, what's informing the way I pronounce Japanese. So I'm watching a little bit of something. I actually don't watch much anime or television. Most of my Japanese speaking ability just comes from listening to actual people speaking in regular environments. Uh, but you should get lots of examples. And so on YouTube, this is actually me just speaking right now, or you could find some other examples of people, just native speakers talking about whatever. So it doesn't need to be a movie, that's just an example of something. But typically movies have a script, and so you can watch that while you read the script, uh, and then you can uh, get much better examples. It just makes the process easier for people. All right. So it again, it doesn't. You don't have to do it with a particular thing. Just pick whatever you like, whatever you like, whatever you're interested in. As I says, hi teacher, I haven't been with you for a while. It's a good day that I'm attending this broadcast. Glad to hear. So Kenan says, how can I imagine the things if I didn't have any confidence with my words? Should I just keep watching movies to improve it? Just do what I'm telling you to do what I'm recommending. So again, the point is you're looking for examples of how other people would do something. So if it's difficult for you to imagine something, then you can easily check that by watching a video. So you watch the video while you read the transcript, then you stop watching the video as you continue to read the transcript, but you imagine how the character would say something or how the person would say something, and then you go back and check that. So you listen to how they will do it. And after a while, you will get very good at anticipating how they will sound. And that will, the, the point of this is just to train your imagination so that you can, you can improve your own pronunciation. All right? So it's just a quick exercise uh, to do some of that. Uh, let's see, as I checked some videos of yours, I noticed that I needed to listen to speakers of the language more and try to speak without fear so that I could speak fluently. Uh, just to make this clear for you and everyone else out there, the confidence that you need to speak, it comes from understanding the language well. So listening to things, if you don't really understand that, you will not feel confident using it. So you don't become more confident by repeating things, just trying to force yourself to speak. It's actually much better to really understand something. Uh, if you watch the, the previous video, the previous live video I did, when was that? Last Thursday, I think, a week ago. Uh, so if you watch that, uh, it will explain an example of this about how to really understand something deeply the same way a native does. So that's what I'm trying to do in all of my videos. Today's video is about pronunciation, but often I'm teaching vocabulary and helping people just, just understand the way they should be learning. So when you feel confident about your vocabulary, that means you've eliminated the doubts or questions you have about grammar or pronunciation or vocabulary, and then you're able to speak. So don't worry about trying to find people to practice with or repeating things. Things or uh, we're looking for, yeah, as I mentioned, like finding people to practice with. Like none of that is going to help you improve as much as just understanding the language better. So when you understand, you eliminate the questions and doubts that stop you from speaking, that's when you speak. Uh, let's see. Elders is the day I take a dollar. The game is over. All right. Uh, Prince says, sometime pronunciation becomes a problem, sir. Yeah. So again, like this will train you to improve that. Also, if you'd like to hear me uh, and, and teach or learn how to make all these different sounds the same way native speakers do, then just get Frederick, which you can click on 
the link in the description in this video to get, or the uh, link in the description below this video. Uh, it's like imagining speaking with another person. Yes, so you can speak with another person or you can imagine like multiple people speaking. I could have, you know, conversations in my mind uh, of multiple people speaking. It's almost like a dream. You can imagine that. But the point is, uh, this is the exercise that will train you and help you improve your pronunciation uh, as you get good at that. So if you can manipulate your own pronunciation, then you will get very good at making different sounds. Uh, and that's how you speak more, more fluently and confidently. All right, uh, tomorrow I will play basketball. After that, I'm gonna, gonna eat, gonna, you would just, well, gonna, gonna is, is a contraction of going to, so you just say gonna eat pizza. All right, as it says, when reading in English, it's, uh, I sometimes read it incorrectly, unfortunately, but someone gave me a site to correct the pronunciation. Yeah, so again, this is why we find something where we have an example of somebody speaking. So it's a movie or a video, and we have a transcript, all right? So you don't have to imagine how they would sound. You know exactly how they would sound uh, because you're, you have that example to check. So you're listening, you're trying to get a good example. This is the same way you would train AI. So you're kind of training yourself in the same way to use your own imagination. All right. Uh, let's see. Juan Carlos says, what's a good way to begin a conversation? That's a big problem for me. Even if it's very simple words, I just don't come out. It's very embarrassing. Uh, Juan Carlos, watch the video I did. It was maybe two weeks ago about uh, this can make or break communication. So if you watch that video, it specifically talks about this issue, about beginning conversations. As our yes, I want a lot. Can you buy it? Yes. Okay. I think people got it. All right. Let's see. Fuxaya uh, Castilla. <laughs> this is H-Ray. Are you thinking about that? Because it's Nagasaki. Let's see. Uh, Zinish Beck says, got it. You're right. Hopefully everyone will. Yeah, this makes sense. Uh, will mimicking helps to improve pronunciation? Yes, it will. But I'm, the, what I'm suggesting here is that you do this with your imagination because it's much easier and faster to improve your pronunciation that way uh, because you will probably become frustrated if you try to just speak directly copying the other person. Because like the example I gave about Barry White like I can listen to him talk and I'm not going to sound like Barry White because my voice just isn't low enough. I can kind of pretend like give give my voice, but my, my voice just doesn't go that low. All right. So I, if I find someone who I, I uh, someone I can sound like, uh, I can kind of pretend or mimic those sounds, but it's much easier for me to do it mentally with my imagination. So I imagine myself doing something and then I can mimic there or I can take them speaking and then change their words, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Can you make a lesson finance English? I work in finance sphere. Uh, we have uh, a couple of different lesson sets about finance, uh, sales, investing, things like that in Fluent for Life. So we've already done that. Uh, hello, teacher. Remember me, says Mr. Mario. Yes. Yes, I, I remember Mr. Mario. Yeah, it's a me, Mario, Mario. Let's see, Sanders is great exercise. Thank you. Uh, X Dan says, Sir, I asked my teacher how I can speak English very good because I know many words in English, but she told me that if I want to speak English without translating the words I want to, uh, that if I want to speak English without translating the words I want to say in my mind, please help me. Oh, what, what did she, did, did your teacher give you some advice? The, the, the only advice I give to people is that you have to understand the language well enough to speak. So if you, if you are learning something through translations, then you will speak through translations. So how you learn is how you speak. And if you learn English as a second language, and this means you're learning translations or trying to study grammar tables or other things like that, that actually can make the language confusing. And when you're confused, you don't speak. All right. So most people, uh, even myself, like I don't want to make mistakes in front of other people either. So I will probably not say something if I think I will use it incorrectly. Instead, I will switch to a different word or something uh, that I can express correctly. And so most people, when they're learning, they're, they're still learning through translations or through all of the traditional second language methods that actually stop you from understanding the language well. 
And a big part of that is the, the language that you learn, like the vocabulary or the speaking examples that you listen to, it's not the way natives actually speak. And so even this, like you might be understanding my speech here very well, but it's still different from how I would normally speak in a conversation. And you can see me speaking in conversations with other native speakers on the channel. So to search for uh, Fluent for Life or Master English Conversation, and you can see uh, how that works. But, but that's, that's really the whole secret. And so most people either don't know about this or if they do, they just ignore it because schools don't really care. They need to, you know, just get you to practice something for a test. And it doesn't matter if you become a good speaker or not. But for me, like that's the thing I specifically focus on, how to help people actually speak. And so the way you learn becomes the way you speak. And that's the same thing I've been saying for 20 years and helping people learn like a first language. That's the reason I do that. So we really want to help people understand the language well. Watch the, the previous video, uh, the previous live video I did last week uh, talking about the word super. And you will see an example of that when you understand something really well, then you feel confident using it, all right? That's when you speak. So most people think that you start speaking and you improve your fluency by speaking, but that doesn't really help you because you're not actually improving your understanding of the language when you speak. You're just either getting examples from other people in conversations, uh, but typically repeating things isn't going to teach you anything new or help you understand language better. And it's understanding that helps you speak, all right? So that's kind of a long way of explaining that, but if you'd like to speak uh, without uh, thinking and translating, then you need to stop learning that way. That's basically what you have to do. And I, and I, I feel bad. I'm not trying to say like you guys are doing that. It's, it's just really the way everybody teaches. And that's why people are so used to doing that. All right. Uh, let's see. Historias is excelente. There we go. Ah, you speak French. Okay. Uh, I speak four languages. Very good. All right. So, oh, wow. Like how? Okay. I answered that question already. Joseph says, I drew, uh, how can I learn a new language quickly? You just begin it the same way I explained it before. So you, you start learning it as a first language. That's all you have to do. Uh, and the, the tricky thing is just like, it's hard to uh, collect the information or the examples of native speech that you need to do that and to make it clear for you because most people do not teach that way. So if you look for examples of English, uh, I have a video series here on YouTube. It's like the best beginning English grammar playlist. Just look for that playlist on my channel and it shows you how to learn English as a first language. Uh, Mal Gorzada says, I am a member of Fluent for Life. Well, again, welcome to the program. Hopefully you are enjoying it and improving with it. Uh, let's see. Saddam says, good morning. All right. Drew, you are amazing. I learned a lot from you, particularly linking pieces of thoughts without interruption. Glad to hear. All right. All right. I think everybody's, yeah, everybody's getting it. And look at that. It, we, we, we finished in under an hour <laughs> without me getting through all the comments. So if people have any additional questions, feel free to post them here. Uh, I will give a quick recap of what we talked about in this video. Uh, the point is, if you want to improve your actual, like your spoken voice, you should become better at improving mentally uh, your kind of ability to imagine the way other people sound first, because you can see examples of how they would pronounce things and you can test yourself about this. And this is actually the same thing I recommend people do with Frederick. So if you have that app, uh, you can imagine how I would say something and then listen to the app give you that. Or you can read a, uh, an example of like a sentence and then you can hear how I would actually say that sentence. All right. So remember this app is made for both native speakers and non-native speakers because it takes you through all the steps that you need and you will have to go through all of those steps if you want to understand and pronounce English like a native. Uh, but again, the whole point is to train your pronunciation. And this is another great way to do that. Just using your imagination to take examples of speech where we listen to someone like an actor in a movie or someone giving a speech. So we listen while we read a transcript and then we stop listening and continue to read the transcript. And then we go back and play that video again and just listen to how that person would sound, all right? 
So we're just trying to anticipate how that person would sound. That's really the first level of this. The second level is taking their speech and actually changing it, so giving them something new to say in your mind, the same way AI would do that. So this is how you can take AI and generate voices where some celebrity is reading a book or something that they're not actually reading. And some of these sound really convincing, but you can do this in your mind and, and make it uh, actually perfect. And then the next level of that is to take your own pronunciation and manipulate it in the same way. So you can listen to how someone else would speak and then you try listening uh, to how you would speak and you can change your pronunciation and improve your pronunciation in that way. All right. So really this will, again, I, I know it sounds a little bit weird that you think maybe your mouth movements and that kind of thing are important. And yes, it's helpful to do that, but the, the power of your mind, uh, it really will surprise you if you try to do this. And this is how I got good at just mimicking different voices uh, and understanding how different people say things. And I can take you know, speech that nobody actually said, and I can put that into the voice of someone else in my mind. So I can take that in my own voice. That's kind of how I'm speaking, how I continue to speak, uh, and it's become automatic for me, but it also helps with your fluency. So there are many good reasons to do this. Give it a try. It's a very easy thing to test, uh, and you should see very quickly how it can help you improve. All right, last final question to see you. Sanders says, have a wonderful day, Drew. Thank you so much. Awesome class. Glad to hear it. Uh, my voice is ass. Oh, no. Well, that's awful. You should change. Don't, don't have an ass voice. You need to have a better voice than that. Change that in your mind first. Okay, so that's how you improve your pronunciation. I don't think I will speak like a native one day, even if I want to speak English with my friends. I just don't do it because I don't want uh, to be annoying in front of them. Yeah, so again, you have the typical kinds of problems uh, that most English learners have, and that's because of how they learn. All right, so if we imagine like two people... Uh, and let's say, just like to give a, I think you said you speak French, so maybe that's your, your native language, let's just, let's, uh, let's assume it is. Uh, so we have two French speakers, uh, and they both live in France, they're both, I don't know, let's say they're like 20 years old, uh, and they don't know any English. Now there are some connections, it's easier to learn English from French, just because some of the words are the same. Uh, but if we imagine both of them, both of these people spend like one year, uh, learning the language. Now the first person they learn English as a second language and this means they're going to learn English through French and maybe their teachers are going to explain a lot of things in French to help that person try to understand or they will try to study grammar rules or they will listen to dialogues that kind of thing uh, and so after a year they will still probably be, they will know a lot more English, but they will still continue to struggle. They will have problems with their accent. So let's just draw a kind of unhappy person over here. They will have problems with their accent. They will forget words in conversations. And again, it's not because of who they are. It's because of how they learn. And we know that because this other person over here, instead of learning English as a second language, they learned English as a first language. And this means they're going to get real native examples. They're going to get lots of native examples that will help them improve their pronunciation and their listening. They will understand grammar uh, more intuitively through getting visual examples of things. Uh, and this will help them improve their speaking and fluency and confidence automatically. Okay, so it does just because you don't live in an English speaking country doesn't mean you can't become a really good speaker or even sound like a native if that's important to you. Now, I will say uh, pronunciation is less important than correct grammar, uh, but you can improve both of these things as you're, uh, as you're learning more like a native speaker. So if you stop learning with traditional methods that actually keep you stuck, so again, traditional methods are not going to help you understand the real speech that natives are using, and they're also going to make the language more confusing, so it becomes more difficult when you try to speak. Okay, so the, the actual method is making it more difficult for you to communicate. So stop doing that and actually just start getting examples of how natives speak. And just watch more of my videos if you'd like to learn uh, specifically how to do that. Uh, but that's what we do on this channel. So this is helping people understand English as a first language. Okay. So this person over here, after a year, they sound more like a native speaker. And it, I'm just using a year as an example, but even like a week would be different, okay? 
So even just a little bit of time, uh, this person is like improving their fluency. This person is kind of learning more, but they're staying pretty flat. They're learning more vocabulary, but they're not really becoming a more confident speaker because they don't really understand what they're learning. They can recognize a lot of information, but they still don't have the confidence to speak because they really don't feel that they actually understand that. Okay? So it doesn't matter where you live. You can do this in France or Germany or Spain or uh, Italy, you know, like wherever. It doesn't matter uh, wherever you're trying to learn. The point is, either you learn like a native, so you're learning English as a first language, or you're continuing to learn English as a second language. All right? All right, let's see here. Uh, okay. All right, let me see if there are any more uh, questions over here. All right. I think, okay, that makes sense over here. Okay, so yeah, like just because your, your pronunciation is bad now doesn't mean it, like you couldn't improve it, okay? So don't worry about that, like the past is the past. Now we're going to change the way we learn and become a more confident speaker. So don't worry about that. Feel confident. Feel excited about that because it's, it's not about you. It's just the way you learn. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Gans Jim says, Hi, Drew. Learning pronunciation is a tricky part. Uh, if you put up with whatever words or phrases, listen to many, uh, watch different native speakers, you'll be able to say those words comfortably. Yes. So the more examples you get, you, more, you will feel more confident about it, and that's what will also let you try to say new things. So you're listening to someone who is saying something, and you know what they're going to say, and you can practice that, but then you can also imagine how they would say something different. Okay. And so you can get lots of examples of that and, and practice and train yourself. And you will become very good at doing that. And really the ultimate level uh, is you will know what the other person is going to say before they say it. When your language level gets good enough, you already know what the person is going to say often. It's not like all the time. But this is why people can finish each other's sentences uh, or people will interrupt each other because they know what the point is. And it, obviously you shouldn't be doing these things anyway, but people can because they know the patterns so well. Okay, That's like the highest level. When you're really fluent, you actually start doing this and it becomes much easier to do that. You can really anticipate what other people are going to say because you know what their, like their, their questions are uh, or the way they pronounce things. Uh, Conan says, what is the difference between them? I mean, there's a lot of people learn English language like a second language and they get fluent. I agree with you, but sometimes you can make it. Yes, like uh, if you imagine... Uh, I don't know what country you are from, but let's imagine uh, Japan, just as an example, because I'm in Japan, so I'm going to draw a quick uh, picture of Japan over here. So th here is Japan, uh, and I'm going to draw this pretty close over here, but let let's imagine uh, America is over here. Now, there are different ways that I could get from Japan to America. I could swim. I mean, how long would it take me, if I could swim, how long would it take me to swim to America? How long would that take? I don't know. You can Google that and find out. Let's, let's, let's just say it takes, I don't know, two months. Because I think a boat, like, it takes maybe a week or something or, you know, for, for those big, like, shipping containers for a boat to go from uh, Japan to the United States. I don't know how long it takes. Uh, but you can imagine it takes a long time. Uh, or I could fly. So I could fly from Japan to the United States, and it takes, I don't know, 11 hours or something, maybe from Tokyo to, to the West Coast, okay? So there are different ways to get to the destination. So I can start in Japan and get to the United States. I could swim, and maybe that would take many months if I could do it, or I could take 11 hours and I could fly. So in the same way, you could learn English as a second language and become a good speaker. You could learn English as a second language and become a good speaker, but that's kind of like swimming when it's much easier and faster to fly. Wouldn't you rather fly? Wouldn't that be easier? <laughs> I would rather do that like uh, because I failed for many years at learning different languages. I don't want to swim from Japan to the United States. That's a huge waste of time. Maybe I die or get eaten by sharks or something like that. I want to fly. Make this nice and easy and quick. Okay, so it's the same thing. 
So English as a second language, it is possible to get fluent that way, but it's very difficult because you're, while you're learning, you're making it more difficult to communicate. So it's, it's, just, it's a really, I don't know, like I, it doesn't make any sense to me at all to learn that way uh, unless you're trying to be a, a linguist specifically. What I'm talking about is being able to communicate fluently and confidently. Uh, and so I would much rather learn English as a first language or whatever. So I learned Japanese as a first language today, uh, and that's how I'm able to get fluent much faster. So you could, uh, like some people do, get fluent after they've spent many years of something. But if I was trying to learn a new language starting today, I would do it this way. Okay. So yes, like it is possible to learn uh, a different language the traditional way and continue to do that. Uh, but again, like, why would you do that? All right. Uh, let's see. Kevin Mendo says, thanks, Sensei. All right. <laughs> Danielle says, I'm talk English. So you would say, I speak English or I talk in English. All right. Alex the Great says, uh, is accent important? Uh, not, not as important as people think. I know people like to sound native. Like I like to improve my Japanese pronunciation and try to say things in the way a native would because that's really impressive to people. And it can change the way uh, people talk with you. So I want to get as close as I can to the native way someone would speak. That way, like I'm speaking with someone and they're surprised and impressed by the way I speak uh, because that's going to change the relationship I have with that person. So if I, if, I can, if I can use some vocabulary or pronunciation that sounds like people, like if I, if I meet, I remember traveling one time here in Japan, I was in a different part of Japan uh, and I met, um, like I heard, like just a woman talking with her kids in Japanese, but she was using like local Nagasaki dialect. And I was like, oh, are you from Nagasaki? And she was just surprised to hear a foreigner asking that because foreigners typically don't know the difference between like, you know, different accents in different parts of Japan. Uh, but this is the same way a uh, an English learner in the United States would know, oh, you're from Texas, you're, you're maybe you're from here or that. It just means you have a good depth of knowledge and experience with the language. And so that changes their impression of you uh, or their understanding of you. And, you know, that could that could mean uh, like a better business relationship or a discount at something like there's always you know interesting things that happen because of those experiences and that's why I try to do that but more important than accent is just communicating correctly so having good grammar uh, let's see Xdan again says that can you give us some activities that we can do to improve my skills uh, so if you just watch my channel and you will you will learn lots of different things but uh, I always like to keep it simple for people, so just focus on this one thing, which is learning English as a first language. That's really all you have to do. So instead of learning like all of the tricky things you need to do for learning English as a second language, so trying to study grammar rules or make flashcards or something like that, just learn English as a first language. Watch the previous video I made. I forget the name of that, uh, but it was the one, it's like from a few days ago, last week. Watch that video. Uh, and also how to get a deep voice. Uh, you, I answered that question with this video as well. So you have to imagine uh, like the way you speak now or imagine some other people with deeper voices and, and really practice with that. And I mean, you have a, a kind of natural limit, like you couldn't be really low. I don't know how, how you sound, but uh, I mean, most people have a comfortable lower voice of speaking. So even right now I could, you know, if I'm like angry at my kids, I might, might make my voice a little bit lower, you know. <laughs> but uh, typically, th this is the way I speak. All right. Uh, Mash says, what you mean learning English as a first language? Please give an example as I joined a little later. Thanks. You should watch the, watch the, uh, the video on my channel. Actually, I have many videos on the channel about this. Uh, but learning English as a first language, if you just search my channel for that. Uh, the basic idea, I'll give you an example of Japanese, like a lesson of Japanese as a first language. I haven't given this lesson in a while. Um, but right now, I'll teach you some Japanese as a first language. And this means I'm trying to help you understand it in Japanese rather than through translations. Uh, so if we have kuro, kuroi maka, ao, aoi maka, aka, akai maka, kuro, ao, aka. Haka. Kore wa kuro 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 
黒、黒、黒。黒いマーカー、黒いサイフ。Okay? So that's an example of how, how we would learn something, and I don't expect you to remember those words now.、Uh, I didn't, you know, it's the, the point of language learning is that you're getting、uh, many, many lessons over time that really help you understand things. But the point is, I don't need to use English or your native language to teach you Japanese. I can teach you Japanese in Japanese. Okay? So that's what it means to learn a language as a first language, and you can just think about how you learned your native language as a child. I don't know what your native language is, but if you're maybe from China or Vietnam or whatever,、uh, you learned Chinese or Vietnamese or whatever your language is in your language because that's the only way you can teach someone. Your parents cannot use one language to teach you another language because you don't know that language either. So, the only thing they can do is give you examples of things that you understand. And when you understand something, you have the confidence to speak. Okay? So, you begin by understanding, that's when you speak. You don't like repeat. I don't, I don't just say, like, if I say, like, a kudo, 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 and I keep showing you this, you don't really understand what I mean. Kudo, 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 kudo. But because I show you, like, kudo, ao. Then you think, ah, he's talking about colors. Like your, your brain begins to understand the difference there because I made it understandable. Okay? Kudo. Kudoi maka. Ao. Aoi maka. And now you're learning, ah,、oh, that's interesting. Like the color comes before the object. Maybe, oh, that, that's like English. That's interesting. Like black marker, kudoi maka. Blue marker, aoi maka. Aka. Akai maka. Okay? So your brain is processing all of that information because I'm making the language understandable. So, as me,、uh, for like finding ex- an example of something just to make it easier,、uh, and this is like a very simple and easy way of understanding this, but you could begin doing that with any language. Okay? So you don't need to learn English. Through a different language. The, I mean, the only reason to translate really is if I need to go to another country on business and I need to like just learn some expression just to say that. Okay? So it's not, you know, I'm not actually learning the language, I'm just learning a few phrases.、Uh, so maybe I can say, Where is the bathroom? or, you know, Hello, nice to meet you or something like that. All right.、Uh, let's see. All right, Canaris says, Hi, Drew. I think one must have hard working tongue and mouth apparatus to、uh, pronounce words correctly in English. And also, especially women, should sound more kitty ish, maybe because of more nasal sounds. Yes, again, I,、uh, I don't want to, to have a discussion about like, how people's voices actually sound.、Uh, really, the point of this video is just to show you hey, you can do all this with, like, do, do the mental work first, and the physical work becomes a lot easier. So, once you can start making sounds, once you understand something mentally, and you can do that practice all day, you can do it very easily. And so, you do that just getting used to you making those sounds, even the things I'm saying right now. I can imagine all that in my head before I say it.、Uh, and so, that will help me、uh, produce sounds as well, or I can imagine how someone else would do something. So, just do that mental work first. Don't worry about exactly how your pronunciation is.、Uh, but as you get more examples of different people, And this is why we organize Fluent for Life around different speakers. Because I want you to get examples of lots of different people, number one, so that you understand different people in the real world, but number two, so that you hear that each person has their own unique way of speaking. You don't have to sound exactly like me to speak English. Like, they're like literally millions, I mean, billions, really, I guess,、uh, native English speakers. There are lots of people who speak English、uh, as a first language. And so you can listen to all of them,、uh, or even just a few of them, and hear, ah, so like my dad, he sounds different than my mom, but my pronunciation comes from them, and also how my, my physical, like what you're talking about, like the physical hardware、uh, that I have of my, my voice coming from my nose or the size of my mouth, that kind of thing.、Uh, but don't overthink this. We really want to give people examples、uh, just to help them understand and make them more confident. By just doing the mental practice with imagination first. All right.、Uh, let's see. Gansham, there is no such thing as learning a language as a second language. Who invented that stupid idea? <laughs> 
Well, I mean, there, there is such a thing as people learning that way. It's just, I don't recommend it. It's what most people do because they think the only way to teach someone is by explaining something first in their native language, which isn't true because nobody does that in their native language. So there's no reason to do that in a second language as well. Uh, yes, but I found Wikipedia a big relationship between English and French, specifically in vocabulary. 50%, if you can explain this to me, point. Well, if you, if you think about like language origins, like if we have like a language like Latin uh, that would contribute to like English and French and Spanish, so there are going to be some words that are the same, but they sound different. Maybe they even have a slightly different meaning, uh, but like, you know, uh, like international. Like an American would pronounce it international, but I don't know, someone from Mexico would say like, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if that word is the same, but like here, here, here's an example of like there's a television. Uh, I think it's like a, a studio or like the company name called like Univision. So like one, one vision. So an American, uh, like a typical way of pronouncing this, an American English speaker would say Univision. Univision, like you would have like television, so Univision. But the, like in Mexico, someone would say like Univision. So it's the same word, but people would pronounce it differently. And I'm not a Spanish speaker, but the point is, it's the same word, so it can come. They have like the same uh, origin. And obviously, there are many words that are not the same, but a lot of this is just uh, the pronunciation is different. So if you know the word already, like a reason Japanese is more difficult is because it's a different written language. Like they don't, I mean, they actually do use a lot of English, uh, like Roman English characters, what they call uh, domaji. Uh, but like if it's coming, if I'm trying to read that, the, the written characters are coming from China. And so that's a, like a Chinese character, uh, like Yasumu. So if I have like Yasumi like this, like I, if I can't read this, I don't know what it means. All right, but if I if I can read, it's like ah, oh, like if someone writes it down, so like Yasumi, like if I have like Yasumi like that, uh, I can write this in in Japanese because I, I I read it in English. All right, so it's more difficult uh, when the language, especially the written language, is different. But if the written language is also the same, and many of the words are the same, then it would be easier. So I'm surprised the Wikipedia article didn't just explain that, but. Uh, let's see. Extend says, how many years have you been in Japan? I've been in Japan, how long have I been here? Like 20 years, I guess, on and off, but mo most, mostly 20 years. Uh, but I will say the reason I speak is because I changed the way I learned. Uh, and I have friends out here who are older than me, who have been here longer than me that don't like speak Japanese very well. So being in Japan is helpful, but it's not the necessary thing you need to become a fluent speaker of Japanese. You need to actually understand the language the same way a Japanese speaker would. Uh, also, I'm married to a, a Japanese woman, but she doesn't really teach me much. <laughs> All right, let's see. Kanon says, uh, yeah, so you got, you got the idea. But it's a little, it's a, like, also my, my pronunciation, it's more difficult to hear that. So something like, uh, like the Japanese, like, ku, kudo, like, it's like a K-U-R-O, but that, that R sound is not in Japanese. So that, that's, and I don't want to give a Japanese <laughs> lesson, but like this R sound, it's like a combination of L, D, and R all together. Kudo, 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 kudo. So if you're trying to learn Japanese, you would begin by saying like a kuro, like if, if you're coming from English, kuro, kuro. But it's, it's not like that. And as you listen to Japanese speakers, they don't say it like that. So another thing, like to improve my own pronunciation, I can listen to people in my own mind saying these things. Kudo, kudo, kudo. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Hello from Algiers. Says Katsi. Nice to see you there. I arrived late. It's all right. Uh, is it okay to study English with English? Sometimes when you don't know the definite, like the word. Yep. Just use an English to English dictionary, and then it's it's easier to do that. Now I confess I do use like an English to Japanese dictionary sometimes because if I can't read the character I don't know what it is. <laughs> so it's it's just impossible to do that uh, without getting a translation of it. But if I can understand something I will. Look it up in Japanese. 
uh, let's see, in a few months we'll be speaking English and Japanese. Yes, and like you could, it would be easier to uh, easy to do. I don't know if anybody teaches Japanese as a first language, uh, but that's how you would do it. Well, Yasumi, konnichiwa, says Atakise. Yeah. Konnichiwa. All right, Ahmad from Sirius says, thanks. Dear Eric says, I want to talk to you whenever you're not online teaching. Well, if you have a uh, message, feel free to uh, email us. Let's see. Dave says, hello, Drew. And I see there, he said, it's 3.05 a.m. in Algier. What time is it in Japan? It's uh, 11, wait, 11 o'clock. All right, international relations again. Uh, there are several languages. Oh, can you answer that question? I've been living in the United States for 18 years, and I still not speak English. Yes. So as Juan Carlos is talking about, being in an English-speaking country doesn't make you a fluent speaker. The only thing that makes you a fluent speaker, and I have not uh, heard anything contrary to this, uh, is just understanding the language like a native. That's all, all you have to do. So it doesn't matter where you do it. You could be living in America, you could be living in Canada, or you could be living in you know Africa somewhere on a mountain and you don't speak with anybody at all. You can still learn English as a first language and become a fluent speaker without actually talking with people. I know this sounds like a, a weird idea, but especially if you've been learning and trying to do things a typical way for a long time, then try something different. <laughs> give, give it a try. And hopefully, like in many of my videos, I give uh, examples of how you would learn English as a first language and helping you understand things. Uh, that will help you understand and become a fluent speaker. Sandra said, you're teaching us English and Japanese. <laughs> yes, I give, I give some Japanese examples, even though I do have a few uh, Japanese, uh, like native Japanese speakers who follow me, but I'm, I don't, I'm not like a big, I don't know, like personality in Japan. So uh, typically people in Japan uh, prefer to learn through Japanese because that's just what they're used to. They're more comfortable that way. Uh, but more people are starting to understand that if they need to speak, they should be learning English as a first language. So this is why I don't, I don't like teach, uh, I don't have lessons here where I teach Japanese speakers English using Japanese. So I would teach the same way wherever, anywhere in the world. All right. Well, it looks like we've gotten to the end. Uh, thank you to everyone else, uh, and especially my Fluent for Life members. If you have any questions, uh, you can also post comments in the system about specific lessons. But hopefully, uh, you are going, you know, going through the program and you're improving. Uh, you really can learn if you get lots of examples. I think Alex just mentioned uh, watching cartoons. Yeah, so you can improve watching all those things. The point is to understand. The language. When you understand something really well, when you know it really well, that's when you can speak. All right. Have a fantastic day. I will see you in the next live video or whenever you happen to be watching us. Uh, the next video should be, let's see, I think next Monday, Japan time. So today is Thursday, Japan time. So next Monday, whatever day that is, uh, that's when I'll be uh, seeing you. Well, my system works. Glad to hear it. All right, says Mal Gozada. And uh, again, thank you for joining us. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.